sounds great. Um, I'm going to show you this slide again, but um, that's my email on the bottom, my personal email, bigjawbone at mac.com. So if you have any comments or you would like to start a conversation about digital dentistry, really anything digital, I'd love to talk to you. So feel free, if you'll write that down, just know that I'd, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, the, um, I'm a consultant for Densply Serona. I'm a consultant for Avident, which is a digital CAD CAM company. And I'm, of course, a, a proud uh, consultant for Carbon. Uh, we're going to be really speaking about pro a process that's developed by Carbon and Densply Serona. So um, just know that I, I've been working with them quite a long time, and a lot of this stuff is things that we've developed together. We're really going to talk about digitally fabricated, removable, complete dentures. Not partials, not fixed, but really the everyday denture that you would make uh, for a that would replace your traditional analog denture, uh, removable complete dentures. And when I was developing this talk, I just started to reminisce a little bit. And you really realize that denture making, the way you learned it, the way I learned it, actually my dad was a dentist, the way he learned it, really was developed in the early 50s by people like Carl Boucher on the left and Muller Devan on the right. And things really have not changed from 1950 to 2020. The denture that we make now is a very highly, a denture we should be proud of, but it does have limitations. And it's had limitations since 1951. The big deal is that at, in today's day and cost, it takes four to five patient visits to make a denture and especially when you're a limited by the amount you could charge in the area that you live and work four to five patient visits it's very expensive the other problem or one other problem would be the lack of intimate fit uh, we've always compromised and just accepted the idea that the resin that we worked with is actually deformed during processing and we it, it affected the way that it fit. We would have to adjust the denture. We would have to work with it. It's, um, a, uh, it, it, it's a problem for us. Um, the inability to duplicate a denture. Now you'll see with the, these new techniques, you can duplicate them easily and it opens up huge opportunities for you. But before, to duplicate a denture was difficult. Also, denture making is a craft. Um, I've been doing it now for 40 something years. I'm, I'm getting better and better every time I make a denture, but it takes time to learn it. And when you come out of school, you really haven't had a lot of experience. And it's easy to be disappointed when you try to make a denture the old analog way. But let's face it, you didn't get a lot of time in school to make a denture. Some schools actually share an upper denture with one student a lower denture with the other so the experience isn't there and you really do need to make a lot of dentures before you know how to do it well and can feel like you're confident in the work that you're doing fewer technicians are trained uh, microdental would be very aware of that the old denture crafts people are going out with me and they um aren't being replaced by people that were making dentures so the worry was, is we have more dentures to make than ever now. Who's going to make them for you? And one of the more important things you don't think about, um, but, but it's true, is that these dentures are, analog dentures just really aren't strong enough to take the pressures from implant-based fixation. Now, if you've ever made a two implant over denture, you've made enough of them, you've seen a denture to crack over the implant. That's just because the material wasn't strong enough. So really, why digital? And I think the three things that really come to my mind are, one, is that we're going to be able to save time at the chair. And I presume most of you are clinicians and 
share time is everything to us. Um, it, if we could make a denture in three 30 minute appointments, not three hour appointments, but three 30 minute appointments, it would really change the ability for you to be able to make a denture just because you could afford it from a chair, stuff, uh, chair side standpoint. I mean, you have to realize it costs you five to seven dollars a minute to run your practice. And if you were thinking of the old five appointment technique, that's a lot of seven dollar minutes being absorbed into a prosthesis where you could only charge a limited amount of, of money in your area. So that's that's important. We can save time. The fit is better. And this is actually monumental. Uh, the way of a denture is retained are two things. One is that you've developed a seal around the edge or, edge of the denture by uh, creating a flange, and that comes with impression technique. But even more importantly, it's the fit. It's the way the intimate fit, the fit of the base to the tissues. And this is an example developed uh, from an article by Brian Goodacre, who's down in Loma Linda, uh, 2018. If you look on the left, the pack and press denture is illustrated showing that areas that are fitting exactly are in green. The areas in gray, this is just the, from the process itself, the areas in grays are either too, uh, are not touching or they're pushing too hard. If you look at the CAD CAM side, and that's true for both print and milling, there's a lot more contact between the tissues shown in green and the base. So in other words, you really expect to get much better fit and much better retention with any uh, CAD CAM produced product. Now, the reason why that's so important that is if you look at the, the interface between the denture and the mucosa, we have saliva. And that interfacial fit, if it's close, will cause a retention caused by cohesion and adhesion. If the denture doesn't fit, you don't get this effect. So these dentures fit much better. And even more than that, there's many, much fewer adjustments made uh, after, you, after you seat it. I mean, I'm talking going from maybe three to four adjustments to none, maybe one adjustment. So it's, it's important on a lot of reasons. Fit's a real big deal. And we'll talk about strength in a, in a, in a minute. The strength of these teeth are unbelievable, but it's the best and strongest denture you've ever made. I've got some statistics down the line. Now, there are a lot of people making them. I just listed a few of them, but the one I really want to talk about is the Densefly Serona carbon process that it really just came out last year. The, the big deal here is that Densefly Serona being a company that's been around forever, um, really had the, the ability to develop a new material that could be printed in a carbon printer and produce a denture that's not only equal to what you could make before, but better. So that's really the story. Look at something that you could do quicker, and you're going to end up with a product you're very, uh, very proud of. So we're going to, this technique is called a reference denture technique. And we're going to start out with the patient's actual denture. And you can do this in about 60, 70, 80% of the patients that walk through the door. Most of them have dentures that are worn out and that's why they come to you. So we're going to take advantage of that denture, create a, interface a model or a monolithic try-in that will be used appointment two. And from that, your technician at Microdental will be able to produce the final carbon denture, which would be inserted on appointment three. Carbon, let's talk about that. You probably don't know a lot about it, but carbon's a uh, Silicon Valley startup. It's a major, major, um, player in the industrial 3D printing market. They've developed a technique 
that's called digital light synthesis. And it's unique to their company and it's really the, their secret sauce. If you look at this, this is an interesting picture here. This is the typical image you would see for some of the laser printers that we, we have in place. The, um, but the big difference is that there's an area called a dead zone. Can you see that on the bottom there? Normally, when you're printing a print using the, this laser or photo um, lithography, the, the print is actually made on that base, on the, on the, on the bottom of the build platform. It has to be broken off that platform and then raised up in another layer laid down. That's where you get the layering effect in most of the uh, 3D prints that you see. The difference here is something that they developed that, that actually is applicable to people that are in dentistry. You, you know that when you try to cure a composite, normally you have to put an, an air inhibition layer over that composite or that surface won't cure. Oxygen will affect the cure of, of the resin. Well, they've used that for their, to their advantage. They somehow pump oxygen through this oxygen permeable window, and it creates a dead zone, an area that will not cure on the plat. In other words, it's, it's, it's um, curing in the resin itself. And so it cures, it raises up a little bit, cures again, never touching the platen, so they never have to break it off. It doesn't have any layers. It's just like an injection molded part, which makes it much stronger. So they're using this light synthesized uh, technique. Now, they're actually making parts for Lamborghinis. They're an industrial company, and they're one of the first printing companies that are, they're actually can make things on an industrial scale. Um, Right now, almost all the NFL helmets in, um, in professional football have liners created uniquely for that, uh, that uh, player by carbon. They print the shoes of uh, the soles of Adidas shoes. Uh, they do a lot of things. Um, in our case, we're gonna look at what they do for dentistry. So three 30 minute appointments. First appointment, let's just go right to it. What we're gonna do is take the denture that you've created, that, that walks in the door, and you need to evaluate it. And obviously this denture has been around. This, this is a denture I made, I think 13 or 14 years ago out of Eclipse, which was one of the first light cured resins. Um, she came in not too long ago. Uh, obviously the denture seemed better better times, but it served her, served her well. The, the vertical dimension of occlusion is a little bit worn. The aesthetics are still there, but it's not crisp. Um, I, it looks like I had to repair it too. They're staining. But this is a denture that you could actually imagine using as a model for a, a, another denture that's similar. Now, typically the patient would come in, they're happy with the denture, it's just worn. Um, that's, that's the one you want to start with. I mean, if they come in and they say, this denture, I, I just never fit. I hated the people that made it before. You don't do the reference technique. You need somebody that's reasonably happy with what they have and reasonably, uh, in a reasonable start for, for what you're going to make. Now, here's an example. A um, lovely woman in her 80s, but the denture was terrible. I mean, it's just an ugly thing as you and but but I I could see the, the midlines off a little bit. It looks like it's flaring on her left. Uh, it's not a beautiful denture, but her vertical dimension of occlusion is probably pretty good. Um, the the base itself was reasonable. So I decided I'm gonna take this denture and make it the reference denture. It, it really on, honestly, why should you start over? when there's a lot of data there for you to, to, to start with. Now, what I found that you need to do is actually really reevaluate or evaluate the basis of the denture. 
this, this is where they typically fall through. The dentures many times are short, in this case, over the retromolar pads. A lot of times they don't cover the tuberosities. A lot of times they really don't go up into the vestibules and um, allow you uh, allow, allow you to create an ideal denture. So in this case, the denture was short. I added a little uh, material in the back. It's actually a material from a tray I made. But you could use uh, wax, compound, that kind of thing. So I extended it a little bit. And now uh, let me do, let me show you what I we're going to go right into the impression uh, appointment one. What I use is a dense splice Serona product a product called Aquasil Ultra Plus Fast Set. The big thing is if you look at the bottom, it says it sets full time in two minutes thirty seconds. We've got thirty minutes to make this denture. The idea that you could have a two and a half minute set material is important because uh, that'll that'll allow you to be able to move effectively through the treatment. You take the denture and the first thing you do is add adhesive appropriate to the material that you're using. In this case, it's a PDS material. And I border mold with a material called Aquasil Ultra Plus Rigid. There's four viscosities in, this, in the aquacil system. Rigid is the second to the most rigid, I mean, um, stiffest. But it, I found it to be an ideal material for border molding your dentures. So I paint the, the denture. I add material all over the, the denture base, all the way around the edges and a little in the middle. And I do it. Um, just, just continuously. I'm not going to build it up one place, build, let it set, build it up in another, filling the whole thing. Place it in the mouth. Now, what I may have to make sure that we, I do is seat that denture completely on the ridge. The tendency would be to actually have it a little higher than you would like it to have. Um, it might actually come up and forward, sit it down, have them go through border molding motions. On the lower, I actually have them draw their lips and almost whistle with my fingers in their mouth. I'm holding it over the premolar area. I have them move their tongue side to side, lick their lips, and then I let it sit. The material sets in two and a half minutes, but in this case, I just let it set in a minute. It's gonna be 90% set. So I'm just holding it in position for a minute. The alternative way to do it, and not the way I like to do it, is actually have them put their other denture in and just sit with their, their mouth closed um, for, for two minutes, or a minute to two minutes. But I find it's better if you're really controlling that impression. It seems to come out better. And this is what I end up with here. Now you can see where I've added to the flanges in the, in the back. I'm starting to get that S-shaped roll but you also notice that you can see through the material into the, into the base itself. There's two things you, you do differently when you make an impression with somebody else's denture. Number one is you never, ever grind on that denture unless you made it or unless you want to make it for free if they get mad at you. So number one, any place that shows through do not grind that away. That would be typically something you would do if you were doing it for a traditional impression with an impression tray, but not with the denture. We need that show through. Number one, so you don't have to touch somebody else's denture. Number two is we want to make sure that the denture is seating completely onto the patient's um, alveolar ridge. If you think of impressions that you make for relines, the big mistake, especially on the maxilla, is that you make your impression, the reline comes in, the patient gets the denture back relined, and the teeth are forward and down. You didn't have the denture back in place. Well, we don't want to make that same mistake with this. We want to be able to see that uh, material show through. After I take that out, I use Aquasil Ultra LV, which stands for light viscosity. 
And that's what I'm going to do to, to make my impression. So in this case, I put it in the tray, put it in the mouth, hold it down in place, have them go through border molding motions, and uh, hold it in for two and a half minutes. I want it to be fully set. Again, you can still see the areas that we have show throughs, but you can also now see that we've really created really a classic impression. We've got that S-shaped curve in the floor of the mouth. We're covering the retromolar pads. This denture impression really mimics the shape that you'd like to see your final base. Now, we're gonna be taking an interocclusal record um, soon. So you're gonna to need to clean off any impression material that shows up on the teeth that would interfere into taking a good interocclusal record. So you, in this case, you would take a barred parper uh, blade, cut around the edge and just expose those teeth, maybe clear the back a little bit so that you'd be able to close down. Uh, you can see a little extra material here in this impression on the distal portions of the denture. You'd need to cut that off too. Now we've made an impression in the mandible. We've made a similar impression in the maxilla. Now we're gonna take an inner occlusal record and you can use any material you would like. I personally like this Regiseal, again from Densply Serona, because it, it sets quickly, but it has a little flexibility. You could use blue mousse, any of those kinds of materials, but some of them are a little brittle. And I'd like to have something that will be accurate, but won't break when I take it out of the patient's mouth. And what you really want to do is um, put both dentures in the mouth, and then liberally place material um, on the mandibular occlusal plane, uh, occlusal surface, and then have bite down into it and hold it for a minute. I, hopefully, you, when maybe we could ask some questions at the end of how to change the vertical dimension occlusion, those kinds of things. But if you're going to do that, um, this would be the time to, to, to do it. You'd either add a little material over the occlusion or you'd make a note that you're going to be able to communicate to the, to the uh, technician that you'd like to open the bite, whatever. So here's my interocclusal record after a minute. You can see there's quite a bit of material there. It's important that you have enough material because the um, that designer needs to be able to, to accurately reposition the maxilla and mandible when they, when they scan it. So here's our final product. So this is appointment one, we're finished. We've made maxillary and mandibular impressions and we've made a good interocclusal record. If you have any questions, let's, let's talk about it. Okay, first lab. What the lab's gonna do is scan those dentures. And typically what you would do in a private practice is make it takes about an hour to scan them. If you can't scan them at the office, you would have the denture go over to the lab. Go, they've made an appointment for you. They'll scan them and get them back to the patient about an hour. But this is what they end up with. Then they use a software of some sort, three shape, uh, in lab. There's a lot of them out there. And they create a denture based on the records you gave them, and any in indications that, of changes that you'd like to make. From that, they construct a monolithic triad. You'll hear a lot of terms for this. Almost all the companies make them. Uh, there's one called the Bauma triad from Avident. Uh, there's a, the monolithic triad. There's different names for it. But basically what it is, is a denture replica made out of one material. And in this case, uh, Densply has the uh, digital tri materials and all the colors that would match the shades that would be um, available from them. And what they're gonna do is actually print on a carbon printer this uh, monolithic tri -in. This is what it looks like. Basically, it's all, it's, it's the, the color that you picked, it's the shade you picked, A1, whatever. 
but it's uh, there's no uh, colored base. It's one piece of material. This is returned to you for your second appointment. So appointment two, you try those in the mail and what you'll find is that you'll already start get, getting some getting some of the advantages of that digital fit. These things fit extremely well. Um, you might make a change or two. Let, uh, for instance, an example would be you, you may may need to shorten the labial flange, something like that. Well, any changes you make in this to the base, adjusting a little spot that's hot or something, we, um, will be reflected in the final product. So. You put that in the mouth, look at it, and start to evaluate with the patient what you see and what you'd like to see in the final denture. There's three ways to, co to communicate any changes or comments that you need to make with this denture. Re there's no way to move a tooth. You can't move it like you would in a traditional trying, you're going to have to be able to communicate any changes that you'd like to make from you to the technician, either using photos, making notes, or making markings. So what I do typically, and this is something that's really becoming very, very popular and really encouraged by the technicians, is they want photos of the case. They'd like to see them. So I'll typical, typically take a close-up photo in centric occlusion. I'll take some retractors and show um, kind of the overall feeling of the monolithic try-in. And then what I do is I'll take photos used with a Fox plane held in with Regiseal. Um, it really indicates, it's a, the, I think it's the best way to indicate whether you have your horizontal plane of occlusion correct or your AP uh, occlusal plane correct. And so, I mean, if it was off, the technician could get a sense of it uh, if you have a full face and they could make modifications using the Fox plane as a guide. So these are the photographs that I, uh, that I would take. I will, take and make an initial uh, marking of the centric relation just so they can get a sense of it. And I'll take a photograph of that. That's what you see here. Then I'll also, on my prescription, write notes. I mean, in this case, I, you know, I asked my, my technician, Fred, would you move the midline? Could you shorten, uh, what is it say, number seven? A rotate number 10, whatever I want to have done, I'm going to write that down for them so they have a sense of it. Giving the photographs and then giving them the, uh, the notes. Markings are a key. And this is where I think you can really best communicate um, the changes that you'd like to make with that monolithic denture. And I do it with just a, a, a sharp tipped Sharpie. And in this case, you can see that I've made a mark indicating where I'd like that midline to change. I didn't like the length of seven, so I marked that to make it a little shorter. Um, I'd like to rotate number 10. That's what that little curly cue means. And then that box on the upper right indicates an area that I'd like to have filled out. Um, if you look at it further, you can see that those that, that you don't really, you have too much of a convexity to my taste in that area I'd like, I'd like to correct it. And I'd like to change the occlusal plane a bit, you can mark that. So the, you can quickly add Sharpie drawings to that uh, monolithic uh, denture, a uh, monolithic try-in, again as a communication tool. Photos, notes, and then these markings. Again, this is done in that appointment too, and it usually goes pretty fast. Now, this is something interesting. Some labs offer it, and I, I presume microdental does too, is they, if you want to, you can take that monolithic denture and send it home with the patient for a, for a try, tryout. And that's nothing wrong with that. It, it fits well, the teeth are in the right spot, it's just all, all tooth colored. 
but they can add pink to the outside if they want to. They can add a gingival collar. Um, you're worried that they might go home and never see them again, but the idea would be is that you would you you can give them a chance for some selective patients to wear that denture home, get a sense of the aesthetics from the spouse, get a sense of function. This is a real advantage of the monolithic and something, something that you should take advantage of occasionally. Now, here is another one. I tried it in. I actually sent this patient home and they came back and said they loved it, except the lower didn't, wasn't as tight as they wanted. So what I did there was actually make a new impression on the lower using the monolithic denture as my, my tray, took a new interocclusal record and got that, we'll have that set back. All right, second lab. The monolithic denture is going to go back to microdental and they're going to rescan everything. This will allow you to um, record any changes you've made to the base. Um, they'll take your monolithic uh, denture and using the computer, make the changes that you've made with your notes and your photos and your markings. And they're gonna develop a final product that will have dense fly teeth bonded into a carbon printed base. This material is really interesting. Uh, it's um, from the from the from the printing industry is fairly unique. It was developed by by the technicians at researchers at Densply Serona. It's a material that they can really use every bit of it. They don't have to throw any anything away. So that's a big thing with the printing process. But it comes in the colors that you're familiar with. It, it, they match Lucitone colors exactly. So you will ask for a certain color base and they will then print that base for you. This will be done with the carbon printer um, at the lab in Livermore. Now, I told you strength was a big deal and it is. Most of the printed dentures that you see now are beautifully shaped, they fit real well, but they're brittle. They're, they break very easily, almost like glass. Well, Lucitone uh, print base material is, is completely different. And this is an illustration, uh, they call it BAM, it's body activated material. But if you look at that short column, it goes up to about 1500, which is 1500 joules per meter square, which is the strength of any high impact resin to date. Anything you would get from Ivoclard, dense fly, anything that can be officially called high impact has about a 1500 joule per meter measurement. If you look at the loose tone material, when it's raised to body temperature, it doubles in strength. I mean, literally doubles in strength. That means that this denture is twice as strong as any denture you've ever made previously. That's unique to the, the Lucitone material. And um, I, mean, I mean, people are doing crazy things with it. I mean, here's an example. They, they've taken a denture on and put it on an Instron machine. Now you can see it on the left. They're gonna compress that denture and squeeze it together until it fractures. I love this picture. Look at the middle. They, they're squeezing that thing and the flanges of the floor of the mouth are almost parallel. They started out on the left, now in the middle. It didn't break until it got even farther than, the, than that. If you look at the pictures of, and it really did, it just broke down the middle. If you look at the competitors, they did the same thing to them, the things exploded. This stuff is strong. Here's a picture of Jerry Kaiser, a, a great technician in Connecticut. Um, this might, may or may not play well, but what he's gonna do is drop it on the concrete floor. We may play or may not play this thing all the way through, but I mean, he keeps going up and up and up. The thing didn't break. 
the record at this point is um, I don't I don't I, I I did it, but I don't think I was the first to do it. When I was at a hotel giving a talk, I threw one of those things out the motel window, five stories up, hit the concrete surrounding the pool, tooth chipped. The thing didn't break. This stuff is extremely strong. And it's accurate. Uh, any area that you see here, again, like that first one, anything that's in the green is almost perfect. If it's in a different color, it's either too short or too long. But you would have to admit these things fit beautifully. The um, the base is made, it's, it's processed, and then your technician will take and place the teeth into the uh, base using looting agents that were created specifically for this. And I'll tell you right now, these things, you, you're not going to get a pop out. They just don't pop out. It's a, it's a great effective bond. They place each tooth in individually and bond it. It's like cured. They go around the mouth and then complete the final prosthesis for you. That's, that's to me, that's a beautiful dent chart. I'm looking at it. I, I mean, if I could do that day in, day out, which I can now, um, it, it, it's, it's really satisfying. So, on the third appointment, I take the denture, I place it in the patient's mouth for five minutes with cotton rolls between it. Again, this is our third appointment. mark the occlusion with um, a marking paper. And, and I, I was thrilled with this, this kind of marking. I, I like lingualized occlusion, that's what I've asked for, which means I'm gonna put the lingual cusp, the palatal cusp into the central fossa of the mandibular denture. I don't want any contact in centric in the anterior area. I don't have it there. So I'm pretty pleased, I need to adjust it. But I don't need to, I mean, if I had this every time, I'd be thrilled with uh, the occlusion. And, and it, you really do get it. Anything you can give them that um, will accurately give them an interclusal record, they can duplicate. There's no changes at all in the processing process like you see in packet or materials. You don't have teeth being intruded into, into the uh, resin when it's packed. You don't have to do remounts because the teeth aren't moving and that's the reason why you do a remount. And um, um, so, so the adjusting occlusion is, is, is very easy. Your patient's thrilled. And if you remember her look before, um, this is a marked, marked change for her. These are beautiful dentures. You could do them day in, day out. You can do them in three appointments so you can, you know, really feed your family with the results of, of making a beautiful denture. You can make duplicate dentures if they want two. And I'm offering a, a second denture now to many patients um, at a discounted price. Many times they accept it. They could do it. If they lose a denture, uh, you can easily make it for them. If they're a nursing home patient, you can easily remake a denture for them. You can do this consistently over and over and over again. Now, we're done. We're done with that. But I have a few more things to show, and then we can start talking a little bit. Um, that's a three-appointment technique. It, it's as simple as that. You can't do it on all your patients, but you can do it on 80% of your patients. And with, with having a, an efficient laboratory close to you, you will be able to really effectively make this in a, in a three or four week period for them. Now, I always want to show a few tips and tricks, and this is applicable to anything, and I just thought I'd take an advantage here um, of a few things that are not necessarily carbon related, but are denture related. Oh, before I go, this is my this is my uh, 
email if you want to write that down. I'll, I'll leave it up there. Big jawbone at Mac.com. We'll go another couple of seconds, a couple of minutes. Does anybody know about this material? It's, it's a reline material. It's been around forever. Ever. It's called Astron LC, which is light cured hard. Raise your hand if, you, if you're familiar with it. I was until about 10 years ago, and it, I'll tell you, it changed my, my life. One of the things that I found that I need to do is reline a denture. And it's all, I used to always do it as a lab reline, and, but it took two, one or two days to do it. A friend of mine who I really admire from the University of Washington said, why don't you try this Astron LC hard? It's a powdery liquid from an Astron company. And it's going to be a chair side reline that will change your life. What you do is you mix the materials together. Um, it is fairly thin when you mix it. Paint it on your existing denture. Let it sit a few minutes for the monitor to soak in a bit. You don't even have to prep the, the surface of the denture. Let the material thicken, and it'll thicken in about four, five, six minutes. And it'll, it'll get to a point where it would be the appropriate thickness for the material um, for, as a reline material. Place it in the mouth. And you, the big thing here is it won't set up in the mouth. It's not like traditional cold cure reline. It's a light cured material. So until you put light on it, it's not going to change. You put it in the mouth, make sure it's sitting properly in, in, in position and then have them go through border molding motions, have them drink a little water, have them talk a little bit. If you're getting a closed mouth functional impression with this thing. So 15, 20 minutes in the chair, you take it out, any undercuts, the material will flex around that undercut so you don't have to worry about it catching in the mouth. Put it in a triad oven. Everybody has a triad oven. Put it in there for five minutes, polish it up, and you're done. If anything is a takeaway for the, from this lecture, think of this Astron LC hard. It'll change your day-to-day -day existence. You'll, you'll love when a reline comes in. All right, so I think I'm gonna stop right there. It's been about 45 minutes. I thought maybe we could ask a few questions. We didn't discuss changing vertical dimension. Uh, we didn't discuss a lot of things. Uh, sh Tim, should we open it up to, uh, to questions? Yes, uh, thank you so much, Dr. Wagner. Um, thank you for the informative presentation. We will now transition into the Q&A portion and we will start. All right, Dr. Wagner, I've got your first question. Would love to know how to record in centric relation and increase OVD. All right, excellent question. The, um, what I do, well, let's, let's, let's go back a little bit. If the patient is reasonably comfortable with their denture and um, they, we don't have to change the vertical dimension of occlusion, I'm going to actually make them in that acquired centric relation. I don't feel like you'll, you need to change it just to idealize the denture. If they're comfortable before, they'll be comfortable afterwards. And if it's not affecting the aesthetics, um, it's certainly, and it's not affecting their, their joint, I, I don't change it. That's, I guess, step number one. Is many cases, you're not going to change them. If you do, want to change them, there's a couple ways to, to do it. One is to apply a little base plate wax to the mandibular posterior occlusion and use that as a guide for repositioning the, the mandible to the maxilla. In other words, I'll warm that wax up. I'll use that as my opening agent so I can open the vertical. And then in that case, what I'll do is actually have them put the tip of their tongue in the back of their mouth, have them close into that wax and record a new central relation and new vertical dimension of occlusion at that point. If you need to change the vertical dimension of occlusion significantly, 
this is not the technique to do it in. Little changes, yes, but if it's really got to be a, a major change, four, five, six millimeters, that's going to change the position of the, the mandible, I wouldn't recommend doing it with this technique. So slight changes, I use personally use wax. You can use whatever you'd like, but that's the way I do it. All right, next question. Uh, in your experience, what percentage of cases can this method be utilized on? It seems many patients have no or very ill-fitting dentures to begin with. Well, you know, it's interesting. Densply came up and actually did a survey and it turned out to be about 70%. There's 30% that you, you can't. They're either coming in, somebody's gotta make new dentures. Um, you gotta make immediate dentures. But about 60 per 70% of the patients walk into the door you'll have the opportunity to at least think about using this technique. So it's, it's pre, uh, quite a high number. Uh, I have a TRIOS intraoral scanner. Instead of sending the denture with impression to lab, can I scan the denture in my office, thereby avoiding taking denture from the patient? Ab absolutely. I, 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 I don't have one myself but people are doing it right and left. That's actually a, a preferred method for scanning. You can, you, you can do it. There's techniques on the web, um, but it, it's done routinely now. So yes, you can take your TRIO scanner and do a real good job and give them, just send the data to, to, the, to the lab. So with all, for offices without a scanner, how do we get the denture back to the patient quickly after appointment number one? Well, what you have to do there is you're going to need to use a local lab that has a scanner. So if you're out in, the, like in New Mexico, you're out in Jowl, New Mexico, middle of nowhere, it's not going to work. But in Albuquerque, we have local labs. I, I, I actually have my scanner in, in house, so I don't do it. My lab's in house. But the dentists that are around me, will actually make an appointment with their laboratory. They know that they're gonna to have to pick up that denture at 11 o'clock. They're gonna race it back to their place, bring it back to the office, maybe in an hour, hour and a half, the patient's sitting there. They were aware that they're gonna to have to wait an hour or two. Um, that's the way it's done. Uh, the TRIO site is great. If you have an intro uh, uh, bench top scanner, that's great. But I think most of us wouldn't have them. Um, I just make arrangements with the lab. How do we get a shade guide for the base? Okay, the shade, I think they make them. It's the same shade guide you have for Lucitone if you have it. It's, it's, it's exact. But um, what you could do is talk to your dense fly rep or maybe the lab could, could do it for you. Uh, they actually have shade, uh, shade guides made. Now the teeth, I, we didn't talk about the teeth, I, I should have, but they're, they're not exactly the same molds as they have with their portrait line, their high-end line. They're a little bit different. They're actually um, 3D teeth. They're designed with much less material on this interface between the base and the denture. So it's carved out in the back. But the shades are the same, the molds, are pretty close to the molds you had before, and they can translate them. But um, again, I would probably work with the lab and see what kind of materials they have for you that would allow them to uh, maybe give you a shade guide or a mold guide to have in-house. All right, here's our next question. Do you ever have border molding issues in the first appointment? Will the extra material cause the denture to lift? Excellent question. It, it's going to change it a little bit. That's why I want to see those show throughs. If I, if I don't see a show through, I'm worried. I mean, I don't know how many of you have made a reline and it looked terrible. The patient says, I look buck tooth and you know exactly what you did. You, you put too much material inside. You can, if, if you feel like the borders are, are, are reasonable, you could imagine, I can imagine you could just use the LB, put adhesive on, make impression with the light viscosity material and uh, be able to get away with it. But, 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 but good question. We don't want to change. We don't want to lift that base from the mucosa. We want to just fill that material in. Could you go through your denture tooth teeth setup briefly? Evidence doesn't favor any uh, type of tooth setup. So why not go anatomic for patient aesthetics? 
as long as there are bilateral simultaneous contacts in CR, I have heard it should be all right. Yeah, I wouldn't, I would agree completely. The, the, the problem with all these digital dentures, and I, I don't care which company you, you work from, they're starting to all look alike. They, they all look like perfectly orthodontically straightened teeth. Now, I like to have a characterized denture. Um, European dentists do a lot more characterization, but I think we need to bring characterization back. But I would agree, if you use an, they call it an anatomic setup. Um, I, it's, a, it's a great way to go, and there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to use it. But maybe the disadvantage of the monolithic at this point is that you really can't turn those little teeth and get them just the way you'd like to have for it. For that look that you'd have to you have to really describe it to the technician and they make those changes for you all right next question can you explain again why we don't need a clinical remount well there's a several different reasons for a remount in a traditional sense mm -hmm. but the biggest reason to do it is to make corrections for processing errors um, expansion of the material, contract of uh, the distortion of the material, pushing teeth in, inward in, in when you do the pack and press. Well, there, you've got to make, you've got to correct those errors. You don't have to correct those errors for the digital setup. They, they don't exist. Now, that doesn't mean I don't touch the teeth. We're not giving them bilateral balance, but what we don't want to have is any extrinsic any 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 uh, prematurities on movement forward lateral I want to correct those what I do instead of a remount is I'll actually take and spend a little time trying to give them a protrusive balance by bringing their jaw forward and adjusting the lower teeth for instance or having them go lateral and seeing if I can see any contacts that will displace the denture so I, I don't I I don't do it with this technique. This is not a technique that you should use on somebody that's a very, very difficult denture. I would, I would do remounts there. But for the day-to-day -day denture, they just don't seem to need it. You could correct it intraorally on that third appointment. Have you found a chair side soft liner that works with Loosestone Digital Print? Well, you know, they don't have anything official. They're working on it. What seems to work for me is a material from Takayama, the Takayama Dental Company called Dr. Tax Softliner. That seems to be a pretty good one. It's worked for me, but you know, we've only been doing these less than a year, so I don't know long term. But if you use the right bond, the, the bonding agent that comes with Dr. Tax Softliner, I've been real pleased with that. It, it seems to last. I've been using it in analog dentures for many, many years, and it seems to be a good one. There might be other ones on the market, but that's the one I like. Are there any patients that this process will not work on? Yes. Um, if the patient hates the denture, don't do it. Um, they're going to say you've made a bad denture because I, from, a, from a bad denture. I mean, I've heard that one. So they've got to be satisfied with that denture and just really need a change. There's... There's the ACP, the American College of Prosthodontics, has a classification that puts patients in range of difficulty from one to four, four being the most difficult, one being easy. These patients should be in that one to two range. I mean, if they come in with a bag of dentures and they don't like the, any of the dentures that were made before, because every dentist was a lousy dentist before, it made a lousy denture for them, this is not the technique to use. Matter of fact, you shouldn't be that patient. <laughs> but uh, this is for a, the everyday general dentistry patient that has an adequate denture. Uh, what material did you use for the distal extension during the reline? Well, I, I use, I, I, I developed an impression tray um, that's made out of a material that I developed myself. And so I was using the tray material that comes with it. There's an extra material. If, if you go, I wasn't going to mention it, but if you go to bigjawbone.com, you can see those impression trays. 
and the VA uses them, a lot of schools, Loma Linda's now using them undergraduate, but that's the material I use. You could very easily use compound, uh, you could use a wax. There's a lot of, depending on how much you need to extend it, uh, probably compound would be used in everyday, everyday office. Our next question, what is the purpose of having a patient's bite on cotton rolls for five minutes at a delivery appointment? Well, you know, what I, what I found is that um, the tissues, if, if I just put a denture in and don't have them bite on cotton rolls, they have a tendency to fall out. They're, they're, the tissues have distorted enough and they just don't seem to seat in well. And I don't know who told me, but it was an old dentist. He said, put in a couple of cotton rolls, mm -hmm. have them bite down for five minutes. And believe it or not, those dentures are much, much more retentive to start with. Uh, well, with, the, with these digital dentures, I mean, you'll, you'll, there'll be jokes made. They'll have trouble getting the dentures out in a lot of cases. So, but that's what I do. I, it's my routine. It's, I've done it for 30 years. Maybe I don't even have to do it anymore. But I put the, the cotton rolls in, let them bite down for five minutes. And for some reason, they, they just stay in a much, much better. All right. That was our last question. Tim, I'm going to throw it back over to you. All right. Thank you so much, David. Okay. Um, I just want to say thank you everyone for attending Microdental's CE webinar. We look forward to your partici participation in our upcoming webinars. You can email me directly for more details. And thank you so much, Dr. Wagner and Carbon for your on this speaking engagement. Um, as well, if you have any follow-up questions, Dr. Wagner is more than willing to answer. You can email him directly. Dr. Wagner, can you show your um, last slide with our contact? Uh, let me see, I might be able to get back to it. There it is, bigjawbone at mac.com. Yes, so here's this email. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to Dr. Wagner. And again, attendees, I like to just reiterate that if you need your one unit of CE credit to please make sure you fill out the CE evaluation form. Once you close out Zoom webinar, a new browser will appear. As I mentioned, if it does not, just email me directly and I can provide for you. All right, well, thank you so much, everyone. And again, thank you so much, Dr. Wagner and uh, Carmen for partnering with us, okay? You bet. All right, all right, take care, everyone.